Hello, welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible, for February 4th, 2023. Here you will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life, with the goal of pleasing the Heavenly Father, increasing our faith, and hearing all of the Bible by the end of December 2023. For the book of Hebrews reads, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 reads, For we walk by faith and not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. Amen. Hallelujah. And the book of John, chapter 15, verse 7, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And John 6 Verse 63 reads, It is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. And so the words of life that we shall hear today, February 4th, are Psalm 42. The New Testament reading will be from the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 42, and the Old Testament reading will be from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 1 through chapter 4, verse 31. Our prayer will be from Psalm 23. All scriptures are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson, incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved, unless otherwise noted. And there was a reading in today's introduction from the Amplified Version. I'd like to thank every listener to Jesus for all too. I pray that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises and the powers of God. And if it is a blessing to you, I pray that you would share Jesus for all too with another and that you would subscribe. Amen. And now Psalm 42. And it reads, As the deer pants for water, brooks, So pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is your God? For when I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan, and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Mizar. 7. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. 9. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me, while they say to me all day long, where is your God? 11 and last. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my continence and my God. Amen. And this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ is every hero, that we may know that even in days of old, this is a contemplative of the sons of Korah. Sometimes one soul may seem cast down, but even when it is, we take captive every thought, every high thought that comes against obedience to the word of God and 
we hope in our God and we praise our God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name. And now the New Testament reading, continuing today in the book of Acts. Today, the book of Acts, chapter 5. And it reads, But a certain man named Ananias with Sephora, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? 7. While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. 5. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. 6. And the young men arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Seven. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. 10. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. 11. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. 12. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord, in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. 14. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, and at least the, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also, a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Verse 17. Then the high priest rose up and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go. Stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. 21. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. 22. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported. 23. Saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. 25. So one came and told them, saying, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, 28, saying, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. 32. And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. 33. 
When they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Then one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. 35. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Thutus rose up, claiming to be somebody, a number of men, about 400 joined him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. 37. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. 38. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this work it, or this, if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. 39. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. 40. And they agreed with him, and when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. 41. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. 42. And 42 and last. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Amen and amen and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ is every hero. Hallelujah and glory to God that we should see, we may see how we should walk in the way, the truth, and the life. That we should teach and preach Jesus wherever we go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For our dispensation, definitely at this point, by God's great grace, is not that we will likely be imprisoned for doing so. So let us seize the time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and speak to others about this precious gift of salvation that the Lord has given to us. And we may do that by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us. If we truly believe, then. And we may pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit to live in us if we are not entirely sure. We may ask, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you said that you have given me a helper, a counselor, the spirit of truth to live within me, that I may worship you in spirit and truth. Father, we are asking in the name of Jesus Christ that you grant unto every hearer on Jesus for all to the gift of the Holy Spirit, the, the helper, Father, that we may know things to come and that we may be reminded of the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And now, the Old Testament reading, continuing today in the book of Exodus at chapter 3. The book of Exodus chapter 3. Hallelujah. And it reads, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. Verse 4. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. 
So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. 9. Now therefore, behold, this cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. 11. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? 12. So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I came to the children of Israel and, and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? 14. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. 15. Moreover, God said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your father, fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together, and say to them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done to you in Egypt. 17. And I have said I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, to a land flowing with milk and honey. 18. Then they will heed your voice, and they shall come, you and the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt, and you shall say to him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us, and now please let us go three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. 19. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not even by a mighty hand. 20. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst, and after that he will let you go. 21. And I will make this people fit. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall be when they go that you shall not go empty-handed. 22. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor, namely of her who dwells near her house, articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters, so you shall plunder the Egyptians. Chapter 4. Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me, or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. 5. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. 6. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, Now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. 7. And he said, Put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again and drew it out of his bosom, and behold, it was restored like his other flesh. 8. Then it will be, if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign, that you may believe the that they may believe the message of the latter sign. 9. And it shall be, if they do not believe e even these two signs, or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river and pour it on the dry land. The water which you take from the river will become blood on the dry land. 10. Then Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. 11. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? 12. 
Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and teach you what you shall say. 13. But he said, O my Lord, please send by the hand of whoever else you may send. 14. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well, and look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. 15. Now you shall speak to him, and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth, and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. 16. So he shall be your spokesman to the people, and he himself shall be as a mouth for you, and you shall be to him as God. 17. And you shall take this rod in your hand, with which you shall do the signs. 18. So Moses went and returned to Death Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please, let me go and return to my brethren who are in Egypt, and see whether they are still alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. 19. Now the Lord said to Moses in Midian, Go, return to Egypt, for all the men who sought your life are dead. Then Moses took his wife and his sons and set them on a donkey, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. 21. And the Lord said to Moses, When you go back to Egypt, see that you do all these those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in your hand. But I will harden his heart, so that he will not let the people go. 22. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. 23. So I say to you, let my son go, that he may serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, indeed I will kill your son, your firstborn. 24. And it came to pass on the way, at the encampment, that the Lord met, met him and sought to kill him. Then Zephorah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at Moses' feet and said, Surely you are a husband of blood to me. 26. So he let him go. Then she said, You are a husband of blood because of the circumcision. 27. And the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him on the mountain of God and kissed him. 28. So Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. 29. Then Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. 30. And Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord had spoken to Moses. Then he did the signs in the sight of the people. Verse 31 and last. So the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked on their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ is every hearer. And Psalm 107 verse 20 reads, He sent his word and healed them and deliver them from their destructions. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that as we have heard the word of God, we have been delivered. We have been healed and delivered from every destruction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For truly the word is true. The word cannot lie. If we only believe, we have been healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now Psalm 23, and it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Five, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, truly, O Lord, you are our shepherd, and we shall not want in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for making us to lie down in green pastures, for leading us beside the still waters, for restoring our souls, for leading us in the paths of righteousness, for your Holy Son, Jesus' namesake. Verse 4, Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for you are with us. 
Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Thank you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies, for anointing our heads with oil and that our cups run over. Surely, in the name of Jesus Christ, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, amen, and amen. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, it's every hearer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.